Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's afternoon Bible study and devotional. Today, we're going to be jumping into Psalm 102. So I invite you to grab your Bibles and read along with me as we read through Psalm 102. Uh, BibleGateway.com, Bible app, two great resources. But you know I like me a physical Bible, so if you would like a physical Bible and don't have one, want an extra one, want one to give away, uh, send me a private message and I will try to hook you up with one. Um, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Uh, so before we get into um, Psalm 102, just a quick reflection on Psalm 101. The thing that really stood out to me in Psalm 101 is like David, uh, Lee, like he has this plan on what it means to live a godly life and what he strives to do. And we know in his life he falls short. Yet, um, you know, the plans that we have might be good, but God's plans are greater and we will fall short. And that is why we need Jesus. So that's what I kind of got out of Psalm 101. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to take a sip of water. Um, I felt like having fizzy water and I didn't have my soda stream handy here. So I got this big one. Um, but yeah, Psalm 102, without further ado. This is a prayer of one overwhelmed with trouble, pouring out our problems before the Lord. All right, let's jump into it. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my plea. Don't turn away from me in my time of distress. Bend down and listen and answer me quickly when I call to you. For my days despair like smoke, disappear like smoke and my bones burn like red hot coals. My heart is sick, withered like grass, and I have lost my appetite. Because of my groaning, I am reduced to skin and bone. I am like an owl in the desert, like a little owl in a far-off wilderness. I lie awake, lonely as a solitary bird on the roof. My enemies taunt me day after day. They mock and curse me. I eat ashes for food. My tears run down into my drink because of your anger and wrath. For you have picked me up and thrown me out. My life passes as swiftly as the evening shadows. I am withering like grass. But you, O oh Lord, will sit on your throne forever. Your flame will endure to every generation you will arise and have mercy on jerusalem and now is the time to pity her now is the time you promise to help for your people love every stone in her walls and cherish even the dust in her streets then the nations sorry then the nations will tremble before the lord the king of the earth will tremble before his glory for the lord will rebuild jerusalem he will appear in his glory he will listen to the prayers of the destitute he will not reject their pleas let this be recorded for future generations so that people not yet born will praise the lord tell them the lord looked down from, he from his heavenly sanctuary. He looked down to earth from heaven to hear the groans of the prisoners, to release the condemned to die. And so the Lord's fame will be celebrated in Zion, his praises in Jerusalem. When the multitudes gather together and kingdoms come to worship the Lord, he broke my strength in midlife, cutting short my days, but I cried out, O oh my God who lives forever, don't take my life while I am so young. So long ago, you laid the foundation of the earth and made heavens with your hands. They will perish, but you remain forever. They will wear out like old clothing. 
Gotta flip the page. Gotta flip the page. They will wear out like old clothing. You will change them like a garment and just discard them. But you are always the same. You will live forever. The children of your people will live in security. And their children's children will thrive in your presence. May God add a blessing to the reading of Psalm 102. Um, yeah, interesting uh, how positive this one was. Um, you know, uh, the prayer of one overwhelmed with trouble, pouring out our problems before the Lord. Uh, this is really kind of cool. So one, it's like, Lord, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I'm like, this guy's like severely depressed. Um He's going through something. He's obviously going through something. But as he gives it over to God more and more and more, he starts, you know, getting like it. You can almost sense the weight coming off of the original author of this. It's so much so that he gets excited about the future. Not, oh, Lord, look at how awful I am. Look at this. Look at that. Like, Lord, help me, help me, help me. Which it starts off that way, but then he gets excited about the future and his children and his children's children and generations yet to come. When we are honest about our opinions and our feelings and our emotions and our circumstances with God and we truly give them over to God, he will help us carry them. Giving us hope for what is to come. That is what I got out of this. Um, now, saying that, uh, you know, there still is such a thing as depression. There still is a thing as like mental illnesses and stuff. I'm not discounting that. You know, if you have a, a diagnosed the, um, uh, depression or whatever, stick to like what your doctors say, but don't discount this either. Don't discount giving it to God. You might not take it away completely. That could be the thorn in your side. Um, you know, if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Um, I don't know the Bible verse off the top of my head, but at the very least, it'll, it'll help. There's no harm in giving these things up to God. And chances are, you know, this, it would have been a daily thing, especially while they were in exile. It would have been really hard to see your home just completely taken over and ransacked. And, you know, there's even with all of that trouble, there is hope. Sorry, uh, one of the screens turned off. There we go. You can see me again. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm reminded of like the Bible verse about Jesus saying like, hey, come give your yoke to me. Um, and then that's just, you know, that's what the author of this was doing. So let's praise God for being God, like what we've been reading about. And let's, you know, help give God our burdens. And just be open and honest with God. And as we get into practices of doing that, maybe he will restore our hope. For ourselves, for our neighbors, for our enemies, and for the future. Let us pray. AJC, awesome Jesus Christ. I thank you for this chapter. I thank you for the, the hurt and the burden at the beginning and how it lifts to the point of being so hopeful about what's happening in the future. You're awesome, Lord. And I thank you that you are the author of all creation, that you are the same forever, that you are the same when we got to know you, you're the same today, and you will be the same for the generations to come. And God, you are good. You are love. And you, you you're, you're just awesome, Lord. And you bend down from heaven. You look down from your throne. You look down on us from heaven. Not to look down and be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. But you look down. You left there to dwell among us. From You stepped down from perfection to live along, among us and show us the way. You empathize with us. You hear us. You listen to us. You care about who we are and what we have to say, Lord. Thank you. 
Help us to act justly. Help us to love mercy and help us to walk humbly with you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, thank you guys very much. Have a fantastic rest of the day. God bless.